Hello, everyone. I'm Hyo Jin Kim, a resident in the Department of Radiology of Seoul St. Mary's Hospital. It's a great honor to have an opportunity to present this research in KJR YouTube channel. The title of our research is Focal Iron and Calcium Deposition at the Globus Pallidus on CT and Quantitative Susceptibility Mapping Comparison and Clinical Significance. The basal ganglia is an area of deposition of various kinds of minerals in the brain, such as iron, calcium, copper, and magnesium. Especially, the globus pallidus GP, is a major area of metabolism and deposition of two important minerals, iron and calcium. Previous histologic studies revealed that the focal deposition of iron and calcium at the medial aspect of GP exists in and around penetrating arterioles and perivascular spaces, as well as in the parenchyma, and this mineralization increases with aging. We hypothesize there could be an association between these minerals in GP and cerebral vascular degeneration such as small vessel disease. However, few studies have explored the association between GP mineral deposition and vascular degeneration and their clinical significance. In addition, assessment and comparison of these two minerals such as prevalence and their discrepancy, have not been evaluated in detail. QSM is a sensitive imaging modality for both iron and calcium, but has questionable value for calcium in GP due to dominant bulk susceptibility of iron. CT is useful to detect calcification, but not very sensitive for iron despite possibility of coincidental iron deposition. So, we use QSM for assessment of iron and CT for assessment of calcium. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the incidence and severity of iron and calcium deposition in the GP and to compare them using CT and QSM. We also evaluated their relationship with imaging markers of small vessel disease as well as cerebral vascular risk factors. This is a single center retrospective study. We identified a total of 1,503 participants with transient ischemic attack or acute ischemic stroke who visited our institution's emergency department between January 2017 and December 2019. The exclusion criteria were those who performed MRIs in other machines or lacked gradient echo image in study protocols, lack of raw gradient echo images required for processing, lack of brain CT, infrared multi echo gradient echo, suboptimal image quality of MRI due to severe artifacts or known hemorrhagic lesions involving basal ganglia, and suboptimal input data for deep learning. We assessed following cerebral vascular risk factors from participants' medical records, hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Their definitions were as follows. CT and MRI protocols were as follows. QSM utilized multi-echo gradient echo magnitude and phase images obtained for susceptibility-weighted imaging. Each CT was linearly co-registered to magnitude images of gradient echo to have the same spatial information as QSM using linear imaging registration tool. Analysis of mineral deposition in GP was done with both quantitative and qualitative methods. For qualitative analysis, the presence and extent of mineral deposition at medial aspect of GP were assessed on QSM and GP, GPQSM and GPCT, respectively by three-point grading scale, 0 negative, 1 mild, and 2 moderate to severe. 
two radiologists with three years and 15 years of experience with neuroimaging reviewed images in consensus. For quantitative analysis, we performed deep learning-based automatic segmentation of brain structures from gradient echo data. From selected 3D volume of interest of the following structures, whole brain, cerebral cortex, white matter, and GP, volumes of each structure were measured and normalized using whole brain volume of each subject. Mean CT attenuation and QSM magnetic susceptibility of deep gray matter structures were calculated. For assessment of small vessel disease, four imaging findings were evaluated as follows. White matter fiber intensities were assessed on XLT2 weighted images using a modified Fazekas scale of 0 to 3. The Kuhn's and several microbleeds were categorized into three groups according to the number of the lesions, regardless of location. Atrophic changes in the brain were rated according to the global cortical atrophy scale. All analyses were performed with our statistical software. We compared clinical and radiological characteristics according to GPQSM and GPCT using the chi-square test, ANOVA, or kruskal wallis test. Dependency between grades of GPQSM and GPCT was assessed using Pearson's chi-square test. The association of mineral deposition in GP to imaging findings of small vessel disease and cerebral vascular risk factors was assessed using univariate regression analysis. Multiple regression analysis was performed using significant variables from univariate analysis. This table is summary of demographics, clinical, and imaging characteristics of participants. 40 men and 65 women were included in this study, and their mean age was about 66.1 year. This table describes distribution of patients according to grade of GPCT and GPQSM. While GPCT and GPQSM were not identical, they were dependent significantly on each other. About two-thirds of patients had the same grading of GPCT and GPQSM. The remaining 41 subjects had higher GPQSM grade than GPCT. Subjects with presence of any focal calcification or iron deposition in GP were older than those without. I'll show you other statistically significant results in this table in the next slides. This figure is about correlations between mean attenuation or susceptibility of GP to GPCT and GPQSM. Not surprisingly, Subjects with positive GPCT showed higher mean attenuation compared with subjects with negative GPCT. And subjects with positive GPQSM showed higher susceptibility of GP. Subjects with positive GPCT showed higher mean susceptibility of GP compared with subjects with negative GPCT. The relationship was not significant between GPQSM and mean attenuation of GP. Subjects with focal mineral had significantly smaller volumes of gray and white matter compared with subjects without these minerals. Meanwhile, subjects with higher grades of GPCT or GPQSM showed larger normalized volumes of GP. By univariate regression analysis, both GPCT and GPQSM showed a positive correlation with age and volume of GP and a negative correlation with volumes of gray matter and white matter. Among small vessel disease markers, GPCT was significantly associated with white matter hyperintensity. GPQSM showed positive but marginal association with white matter hyperintensity. 
GPQSM was associated with brain atrophy. Neither GPCT nor GPQSM was correlated with any of the analyzed cerebrovascular risk factors. In multiple regression analysis, increased normalized volume of GP and decreased volume of gray matter were significantly associated with both GPCT and GPQSM. In this study, there was a significant association between focal mineral deposition at GP, OCT, and QSM. GPQSM could be a good surrogate of overall iron deposition in GP. GPCT, however, might not be a very sensitive method for quantitative measurement of mineral deposition of GP, considering noise level of clinical CT scans. We found a significant association of white matter hyperintensity to GPCT and a marginal association of white matter hyperintensity to GPQSM, as well as a significant association of aging with both GPCT and GPQSM. This might suggest imaging assessment of GP mineralization could be a potential imaging marker for vascular degeneration and small vessel disease. In addition, we observed a decreasing volume of total gray matter but an increasing volume of GP with a higher grade of GPQSM and GPCT. Atrophic changes in total gray matter might represent net accumulation of tissue damage, and we postulate that these mineral depositions might be associated with acceleration of neuronal loss by oxidative stress, neurotoxicity, and accumulation of disease-related proteins. Given the positive association between GP volume and mineralization after adjustment of aging and other potential confounders, Mineral deposition might induce structural changes in GP. Another explanation is mineralization of GP might be the result of different iron and calcium metabolism at GP. Increased metabolic activity of GP might be associated with increased transport of iron and calcium to GP via vasculatures and the blood brain barrier. There were several limitations in this study. First, the retrospective nature of this study could be a source of unexpected bias. Also, this cross-sectional analysis cannot clarify cause and effect. Second, qualitative visual grading was used to evaluate mineralization. While this simplified grading system might be easily introduced into clinical setting, it might be not enough to demonstrate the association to other clinical and radiological features. Third, subjects clinical backgrounds other than cerebrovascular risk factors that may have affected mineralization of GP were not considered in our study. Lastly, single energy CT might be limited for the differentiation of small hemorrhagic foci from calcification. However, Several studies have used conventional single-energy CT as a reference tool for detection of calcification in the brain, and a previous study showed good correlation between calcific density on CT to vascular calcific deposition on histologic study. In conclusion, focal iron and calcium deposition in the globus pallidus seen on CT and QSM have similar but not identical locations and patterns. Focal iron and calcium deposition might be a potential imaging marker of cerebral small vessel disease. Both GPQSM and GPCT show significant association with increased volume of GP, which requires further evaluation to elucidate the pathophysiological background and clinical significance. This is end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.